Monoha, Minimalism in Japan and Korea. Monoha is translated roughly as the school of things. And this is the Japanese and Korean equivalent to the minimalist art movement in the West that occurred post World War II. So this was happening at the same time. And the reaction here was to the growing industrialization, representation, and the development of a technological culture in Japan, where things were being manufactured, combined, and becoming more and more artificial. And this is the beginning work for Monoha, which is the column of earth. And what this does, it focuses on essentials, just like minimalism in the West, but in a slightly different way, because rather than focusing on the basics of the principles of designs, art elements, composition, and abstraction, Monoha primarily focuses on pure natural materials, the artist's process with the materials, and it's a minimal process, mostly just arrangement and the location of the art. And on the right, you are seeing a Monoha sculpture that just is wood and stone. Some of the principles of Feng Shui are present in Monoha, which is arranging natural elements to work together. And here, basically what the artist has done is both cut the trunk so that it overlaps on the stone and then stack things. It's very, very simple, pure, focused on the materials. So there's a relation between Monoha and Shintoism. We talked briefly about Shintoism yesterday when we talked about Marie Kondo. And Shinto religion holds the belief in Kami, that the spirit inhabits all things. Monoha recognizes the kami by focusing on natural things and using them one or a few at a time, so just in their pure forms. Monoha builds and restores the relationship between the artist and the kami of the material because the balance has been disturbed by industrialization, development, and technology. Because in all of those things, you lose the purity of the material because the materials are processed, they're recombined, they're synthetic, and it's they're jumbled up. And you lose that resonance that they believe in with Shintoism, that spiritual resonance with using just a pure material. In this case, uh, they are burnt wood, which is before the state of charcoal or coal, K-H-O-L, which is what's used for drawing. It, Monoha also relates to Zen. And Japanese Zen Buddhism is focused on aligning yourself with your essential true nature. So it's achieved through insight and meditation and the core realization that our essence as humans is a void. So we are basically just containers that we fill up with things of our choosing. And those things could be objects, ideas, relationships. And you have to declutter them and get them to their essential elements. And you do that through meditation, which is connecting to the essential elements of the world. Therefore, you connect to your essential nature and through arranging them. You can see on the top right, there is a Zen temple. It's not something that you actually go into. It's something that you go around and your movement around it is part of the meditation. And then the symbol for Zen, which is the loop circle, but it's one brush stroke. So it's one simple thing that becomes all things. In Zen gardens, 
to meditate, you manipulate the materials. Sometimes it is actual rearrangement and placing of the rocks and other objects, natural objects. But it's also the raking of the gravel or the sand that's in the gardens and creating those meditative patterns. The point of Zen is the doing of it, not the finished product and what it's going to look like, but letting the process become unconscious. One of the things that if you know how to drive a car, that's a good analogy to Zen because when you're first learning how to drive, you have to think about the car. You have to think constantly about everything that's going on and all the things you learned to drivers at and are you doing things right or wrong. But then after you get years of experience in driving a car, you do all those things automatically. You don't even have to think about them anymore. You go into a Zen space and your physical body and your Zen state takes over and you can drive and you automatically can judge things like distance and speed and accuracy and time and curves and things of that nature. Location is super important to Monoha. It's Monoha itself is primarily sculpture and they would create a non-objective artwork that means it doesn't look like something it just is art with singular natural materials or very reduced natural materials but then they would juxtapose it and juxtapose means putting opposite things together and they would juxtapose it by putting it in artificial surroundings or combining it in placement with manufactured objects or putting it in clusters of objects. Here you see the natural part are the two boulders and then you have manufactured steel rods and it's in an artificial environment. It's contained within a gallery. But why would they do that? They do it because of the conversation. And the thought being that through having pure natural materials and processed manufactured materials in the same space, conversations are started. And the conversation is between the kamis, remember the Shinto spirit of the materials, and between that pure material and then between the processed material where you might have kamis of different things combined together. It also creates that conversation between the people and the materials, the viewer, and making people remember that everything has a spirit. Some are pure, some are transformed. And there's a difference between the two of them. So your assignment is to do a monoha experiment. So for your materials, you have to use a natural material. It can be whatever you have at hand. It could be rocks, dirt, wood, plants, but just choose one material. So you're just using rock or dirt or bones or what have you, and it's got to be natural. And then your prompt for this experiment is to create an arrangement of your natural material in an unnatural environment. In other words, if you find it outside, bring it inside and then put it next to something that is unnatural. While you do this, you're also remembering things you learned about photography. Think about also elements and principles, especially things like repetition, balance, and proportion. Arrange things carefully and intentionally. You're avoiding clutter. You're focusing on the natural material with an unnatural but neutral background. Edit your photographs, crop out any distracting information, and then photograph it and upload. So these are a few examples that I did here at school. Um, this are two fish scales on one of the plastic, you know, little notebook cover portfolio things. And that's okay. It really emphasizes the fish scales and it just looks like they're on a plain black background. 
these are much more the conversation between natural and unnatural. On the left, you have the same two fish scales, but I had them on a mirror, which is unnatural, and that mirror is reflecting the ceiling tiles. And the ceiling tiles also create a perfect grid, which is another unnatural structure. So you have those organic shapes, organic materials on that very industrial type grid and surface. And then on the right, and I turn this to black and white, I have a bone, which is a natural object. It's a knuckle bone and it's on pleather. Pleather is, it's by the door. It's what I have the hand sanitizer on. It's painted silver and it's fake leather that's made to look like pigskin with all the little bumps on it. So you have the natural bone with its natural textures and crevices on something that is supposed to be replicating skin. But when you look at it, you can see that it's a little too even, a little too perfect. And you have that kind of conversation between the remains of a real animal and something that is imitating a real animal. Okay, so you just have to do one photograph and turn it in. That's your experiment.